are going to be dodging invisible blocks that will kill them if they miss if they jump in an incorrect pattern. So we're going to be doing our best to give. Got him. Yatta. Yatta. We're going to be doing our best to give what commentary we can, but uh, sometimes you just got to concentrate. So yeah, most of these levels that I've made have been inspired by Kaizo Mario World, which was a Super Mario World ROM hack, um, which is what gave me um, the path to build all these hard levels. And ever since I've created all these levels, I've noticed that I've kind of built a community of people who actually enjoy, who are actually sadistic enough to actually try these levels, which amazes me. Yeah, eight, eight of the ten levels we're going to play here today were made by Panga. The, the one that I'm on... Inclu including the one we just played before. Yo. This, yo, uh... Yo. This level right here is made by uh, Dan Savato. He was also one nice. of the makers for the Blind Level Race. Nice. First try. No, die. <laughs> High five. I know, I'm like... I'm nervous. Those guys last time had it easy, I'm not going to lie. So actually, this is uh, the level that Pank is playing right now. It's called Float Like a Feather. You're going to see why. It's a very creative level that was made by a level designer named Evil Ways. And it is going to use a lot of crazy mechanics that involve using the cape to float around. Shit. Shoot. That P switch tower is incredibly difficult to deal with. Save the Yoshis. Nice. <laughs> feel good now. So even even though this is technically a race, like I've got I've got my own little Pooh Bear button on right here. You know, I as well. <laughs> which is this guy right here, this awesome guy here. So we're all we're all in this together, even though we're racing. I'd, I'd like to say you probably know the other three guys. They're all famous um, for their own respective games. I'm pretty much just known for that great commentary I gave for Mitch's run earlier. Indeed. I, I did fix the RNG for that level, or for that run. Oh, shnikes. One thing I want to point out is um, you can't actually press start and then start over once you get the midway. If you do that, you lose your midway and you have to start from the beginning of the level. So we use the fast start over to uh, speed up deaths, but once we get the midway, we actually have to let the whole death sequence roll out. So the level that I'm on right now, Ultra Star, was named after actually uh, and inspired by an original Kaizo 1 level. And... Uh, oh. I'll finish it for you, Carl. But um, I got inspiration from one specific level in Kaizo. It's probably my favorite level in the whole Kaizo level series. Yeah, mine too. No, don't. Do not start, start over. over. But it's just a bunch of platform riding and uh, precise timings for oh, all these I jumps, which is, about it. Um, in my opinion, pretty fun. So this level took me about... <laughs> this level took me about three hours to beat. And actually, we've ordered the levels... Uh, in general, from easiest to hardest. So we're playing the easiest levels right now. So that should give you an idea of what you're in store for. Save the Yoshis, save the Yoshis. For the record, that level doesn't count if you don't land on Yoshi, you have to replay it, just for the record.
And and no leads. One thing we've done these races. We do these races quite often. Um, this is actually going to be the end of season one, quote unquote. After this, we're going to be doing our races with all new levels, and um, no no lead is safe. No lead is safe, basically. Yeah. For example, we could spend. Uh, a few, few levels, you can spend like one or two tries. Other levels, you can spend like 3,000 tries. No! Um, my first time on Ultra Star, it was two and a half hours again. A common theme in these levels is it's basically never over until it's over. It's all good. And often the hardest trick in the levels at the very end. You have to end with a bang. By the way, I want to give a shout out to our guys on the couch right here. Uh, I'm going to send out their Twitch name, Jakku, nice. um, over here on the right. We got TriWave, ITG Master uh, right here in the middle, and 8-Bit Video Games, um, all underscores in between that, over there on the left. So give them all a follow. Um, so Panga's actually entering Skyzo 2.0, so we did already did Skyzo 1, um, and uh, with the popularity of Skyzo, Ultra Star, and Bomb Voyage, which you'll see later, uh, Panga had to make sequels. Like any good movie, you need a sequel, you know, so that's what you're seeing. So actually, when we started doing these hard level races, um, some of the first races uh, included about seven levels. We're doing ten today. And uh, they ran around three and a half or four hours in order to finish all of these levels. So we've added three more levels, including the three hardest ones, that, you know, more harder than the other ones. And we're hoping to do it in about one tenth of that time. So. Nice. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> So Skyzo 2 has the same theme of constantly hitting P-switches in order to keep the timer going. See ya, Yoshi. See ya, Mario. <laughs> See ya, Mario. So that spot is a little bit unpredictable because the bomb can kind of move in two different directions. Oh, right there. I'm right at the <laughs> checkpoint. <laughs> I have never done that before. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> I'm going to die. Nope. Nope, oh, yep. Yeah, it's, it's after the checkpoint. Yeah, I'm actually, what I'm doing right there, that death was actually to adjust uh, RNG on the later level. Um, it's kind of important. You want to make sure you have uh, a good shell through. It's very important. So I'm uh, walking off the edge. No, I'm moving on to uh, Ultra Star 2, which is also another sequel level. This one has some of the craziest platforming, or like a... Uh, so many of the platforms going trying at to get once. Back to the muncher. In fact, the starting platform follows you the entire time, which is kind of a cool mechanic. No! <laughs> I can't. Just... It happens. Nope. Luck. Nice. Ooh. Dead. That's what I get for the luck uh, there. Um, the karma. Gotta go pretty fast at this ending part here. So pals will only destroy things that are on the screen currently. Yo! Nice. <laughs> oh, no! So as we, as we proceed through the levels, kind of like we mentioned, the levels get harder and harder and harder. So uh, this really is anybody's race down to the very last level. Last level especially since it is one of my more famously known hard levels. 
I don't think Carl's uh, gamepad has the up button working. <laughs> We're using your gamepad, right? Oh. That, again, that was RNG manipulation, me running off that ledge. You can actually only make that trick on the fifth try, so... So uh, the level that Panga is playing right now is called Panga Express, and it uh, it exploits this very very fast moving shell in order to carry this what is really just a really long bullet bill launcher. This was actually one of uh, Panga's longest levels to design. I believe it took about 10 hours or so for the design for this one, and you'll see you can do many crazy things. Yatta! <laughs> oh, thanks, man. We all we all really really enjoy racing together. So this is this is just like another Saturday for us. Oh, I should I should move levels. <laughs> I was doing that earlier. Yeah, I should just move levels. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. What is what was that one? What was that? It was dunk. Oh man. Oh. Kaiser Block. Yep. Do it. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be playing a level called Bomb Voyage. Nice name. And um, this was actually the level that got me started into these hard levels, actually. They're just, um, Kaiza was, or, uh, Skyza was the first one that I beat, but Bomb Voyage was the one that it just looked so cool to me. I was like, okay, this is something that I need to figure out how to do. So this is going to use a lot of unique Mario Maker mechanics that you wouldn't be able to do in a lot of these original games. That's one thing as a level designer I like to do because I like to kind of exploit certain mechanics and different things you can do with items, which you wouldn't normally see in like a 100-man expert and can be really beneficial in hard levels like these. This is my favorite trick nice. in Mario Maker. Yes. Falling down a pit. It's a great trick, though. But that was that was all part of the RNG manipulation for the last part. I no. Oh. So, like we said, no lead is safe in these races. Um, ever. Yeah, and there's actually. A, uh, an unintended strat for this section that you might see Mitch do. Uh, I actually discovered it, but I refused to do it because that strat just looks so cool. Okay, now, this end part that Carl's coming up to, actually, um, I couldn't do it originally, so I just took Yoshi and jumped him over there and jumped him back. Oof. Could not do it the right way. The cheese, as they call it. I guess one thing I talk about with uh, Ping Express is in Mario Maker there are actually three different scroll speeds, um, but the thing is the fastest scroll speed isn't fast enough to my liking, so that's where this level was born into. It can actually be faster, but that might be a little too crazy. And I just got the idea for Ping Express 2 in your head. I know what I'm doing after HDQ. Um, so Panga Express was a long one for me. That one took me about eight hours. Uh, same with Bomb Voyage, uh, my first playthrough. The hardest trick is fitting through the gap at the end. So the final level in this is the infamous P oh, break. Oh wait, we got. Oh wait, I'm just kidding. Pro, I'm lying. Pro feller. Dude, we're skipping. We I'm don't skipping have skips. Things. I'm that lying. For, it ain't easy being cheesy. We don't got skips. Yeah, buddy. So this is actually uh, the only new Super Mario Bros. themed level you're going to see, and it makes use of the propeller item for a great effect. And we should talk about why we're not going to have a Super Mario Bros. 3 level in this race. Um, 
It's it's not good in Mario Maker, um, especially for us two Mario 3 runners over here. It's very, very slow. The mechanics are completely different. All these games are actually based off the mechanics for New Super Mario Brothers. Um, so Mario World doesn't control like Mario World does on your Super Nintendo. Uh, the same with, you know, SMB1 uh, Mario. Um, so it's... Swag. So uh, the drill actually, and um, we're using the propeller. You have to drill through that block right there, and it's actually really, really finicky. Um, there are only certain intervals where you can use the drill. It looks like the easiest part of the level, but it's actually the hardest part of the level. So you have to time the drill very, very carefully, or it won't work at all. There it is. Oh, that oh. jumps so hard. The jump into the pipe at the end of Penguin Express is probably the hardest part of the level. Yeah. I didn't. I don't even know how that happened. <laughs> All these, avail all these levels are out there too, just like the blind level race. Uh, most of these have been out for a long, long time. Um, you should definitely check out Panga's levels if you're interested in, uh, in Kaizo levels. There's also a lot of great guys out there making great, great Kaizo levels. You know, a lot of people will ask, like, well, why the heck would you play these levels anyway? Like, this doesn't seem like a good thing to do. Why would you ever want to play these? But really, nothing compares to the feeling that you get when you finally do beat one of these levels. All right, so the level that Panga is playing right now is his most played, most popular level, uh, Pea Break. It was, at one point, considered the hardest level that had ever been made in Super Mario Maker. It has over three, it was around 3.5 million attempts, but a point zero, I think it's how many zeros we got, 0.01% clear rate. So that means that out of every about 10,000 attempts, only one, it gets only one clear. And honestly, Probably about half of all of those clears are just us four beating it over and over and over again. So um, for Pea Break, actually, uh, we kind of skipped over a few of these, but um, it took about... Yeah, my first time through Pea Break, nice my niche, first time nice through Pea Break was nice 27 niche. hours uh, to get this level one time. Exactly. So that, just to reiterate that, it took him 20, and at similar times for all of us, it took 27 hours just to beat the level once. Um, when we were first designing this race, we, like two months ago, we never thought that it would be possible to play this level for you guys uh, live on stream. It's the least marathon safe thing you could imagine. But... Also, the, uh, see you later. Yeah, the strats have changed a lot, too. So you're going to see the strat that Penga's using right now um, for this second portion. That's not what was intended at all. Uh, originally, you had to do this really intricate lining up of the shells, throw them at the right time, and then you're gonna, you'll see this falling beetle. You have to hit that beetle up. I, this is going to be a horrible explanation. I know none of you are going to get this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, you have to hit the beetle up with your helmet, which is a Mario Maker only mechanic. You can just see uh, Mitch use the alt strat right there. Um, no. Um, and then shoot the beetle through the blocks there that he's going to skip. <laughs> yeah. That's the speed strat. But again, again, I'm not even that worried yet. Uh, this la these last two maneuvers could take... They can take a while. They could take a while. It's not that easy. Yeah. So on Mitch's side, you're seeing the alternate strat, aka the cheese strat, for that section. Yeah, this is... Uh, I came up with this actually uh, 
during my playthrough of it because I quite simply couldn't do the normal strat. Nice. And one day I was just like, why don't I just jump Yoshi over there? Got this. <laughs> Ooh. I know now now you've you've played Mario 3, you've played Mario Maker, and new suit. The Mitch Flower Power Block, ladies and gentlemen. One of the oh, oh man. <laughs> one of the things that I really like about Mario Maker is uh, people. No. Oh. That's gonna cost a little time. Did you, just, did you well. reset the checkpoint? <laughs> no. I that was kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, but as I was saying, one of the things I really like about Mario Maker is uh, how it's, it's given people just really an option to just completely explore all of the the intricate ways and cool ways that you can use. Just, you know, basic objects in Mario, like all of these crazy things you can do with P-switches and shells. Alright, so right here is, we're going to use an alternate strat to, well, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, uh, the jump that, that pains us the most, I would say. It's a really tough jump. It's kind of hard to describe what it's like playing a level for 20 hours. Oh, nice helmet. Only to get to the very last jump and then die. Um, just to give uh, an idea of that, I recently played a level called Val's Airspace that took me 100 hours on stream to beat. I made the final jump uh, about 42 times, and each one of those times, I shed a tear. Oh, man. Got him. Oh, oh, wait, no. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> that could be bad. <laughs> well, I mean, as long as we're here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> This is a good time to read donations, actually. This would be great. Sounds good. We have a $250 donation from Norbert Noodle, who says, Yata. <laughs> so, uh, real quick, for, for anybody wondering, uh, we got some guys back here with some Yata signs. And uh, so that, that, I believe, anyway, is the Japanese for I did it. And it comes from a comes from a video that you could find on YouTube if you kind of if you just search for Panga P Break of a, a Japanese streamer who I believe spent I believe spent upwards of 50 plus hours beating P Break and uh, the scream that he lets out when he finally beats the level is where the is where the yata comes from so now we always say that in his honor Hiroki <laughs> All right, we have a $100 donation from Steve Wang, who says, this donation is from Area 51's parents. We challenge all the other parents of online streamers to match our donation. Where you at, Mom? <laughs> Super secret stuff here. <laughs> I think she just sent me a text. Skyway to show? We have a $100 donation from Leitnas who says, This donation is a shout out to Trihex. I was so proud of my level I made. He played it and found cheese within like three minutes. Some may be disappointed, but I found it amazing. Keep killing this run, guys. I'll yeah, I'll take a ring there. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, switch. Switch. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the record, my mom just sent me a text that said I gave a donation to. <laughs> she, she, she's yelling at you about it. I, I don't know what name she put it under. Probably Mama Pooh or something. <laughs> Okay, well now Carl's just showing off. The, they're hard levels, man. They're hard levels. All right, guys. I should, oh. We can call it. Nice try, nice try. One more try. Got the switch. 